According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. 11. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 12. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, 13. Each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. 14. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. 15. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. In the politics, people identify themselves with the camps of the candidates of their bidding. In the religious scheme, it's not okay to identify ourselves with the religious leaders. Rather, it's deemed necessary that we identify ourselves with one person alone. That person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Exegetical Data there were divisions taking place in the church of Corinth. It happened due to people idolizing the preachers whom they thought to have been masters of their skills. While each one had his own preferences. It ended to creating different factions for the leaders they admired. Hence, Paul, the missionary who planted this local church, berated them that this thing should not be so. Each one is a part of the whole for the benefit of all. What matters is the Lord Jesus Christ and his good news of salvation. The Corinthian church was also likened to a building. Paul laid the foundation, now others had the responsibility to build on that foundation. They had to be reminded that there is only one foundation. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. This truth was not something new. It had been prophesied long ago in the Old Testament times by the prophets. The sad thing is, the foundation whom God had laid down is to be rejected by the very same people to whom the foundation is to be given. It reads in Psalm chapter 118, verse 22, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Even the Apostle Peter confirms this prophecy as not pertaining to himself but to Christ. He even quoted from the scripture, which states, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. The truth of the matter is that, it was an allusion to the Old Testament temple, that before it was built, a foundation must be first laid down. In Ezra 3 verse 10, it reads, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments came forward with trumpets, and the levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord, according to the directions of David king of Israel. However, the New Testament interprets it that this illusion or type is fulfilled as the Christian church, not as physical reality but spiritual or intangible. One example of this is that passage in Corinthians, or what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. I will dwell among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. 2. In relation to building over the foundation Jesus Christ, the quality of working among the builders has been taken into account. This is illustrated in verse 13 and following which reads, 13 each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work, of what sort it is. 
14 If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. 15 If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Christians who have made the effort to grow spiritually have built something that is permanent and worthy of reward. Christians who have lived like ordinary people of the world have built nothing permanent and in the end will lose everything. They will be like those who run from a burning house but lose all their possessions. They themselves are saved, but they have nothing to show after a lifetime of activity. But most importantly, there is a tendency of falling to the trap of the false teachers if Christians are so admiring of their leaders. So beware of anyone or anything that would diminish the greatness of God on your side. The message I give you from these texts is, a local church must be built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But first, let me be clear on this. The word foundation must be defined. It is from Hebrew word, yakid which means to found and in Latin, it is fundatio and fundo. It is the basis of an edifice, that part of a building which lies on the ground, usually a wall of stone which supports the edifice. Metaphorically speaking, the apostles of the Lord Jesus are foundations on the level of localized organizational aspect. Thus, we find in Ephesians 2 verse 20 that apostleship is a foundational office. Thereby that office remains intact for the twelve exclusively until the end. Of course, in the exclusion of Judas who was replaced by Mattathias. The Lord Jesus Christ, however, is the foundation on the level of spiritual and is the ultimate foundation. And is the fulfillment of what is written by Isaiah 28 and the verse is 16. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. There is a significance of this in Christian history. The old Roman Catholic Church built their foundation on mere human beings such as the Pope, in such a way that papal supremacy was developed as a tenet. It is the doctrine that the Pope, by reason of his office as Vicar of Christ and as pastor of the entire Christian Church, has full, supreme, and universal power over the whole Church. The core of this papacy is the belief that Peter was the first bishop of Rome and continuously succeeded by others whose total number reaches to less than 300 popes in succession. But nowhere in the scriptures nor in history that Peter relinquished or passed his apostleship to anyone. In fact, he remains as one among the twelve apostolic foundations of the church, symbolized by the city, the New Jerusalem, who will be coming down in the future. This is clearly stated in Revelation 21 verse 14, Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. On the other hand, some evangelical churches similarly built their foundations on their religious organizations or affiliations. This is highlighted by the fact that they would not remove the names of their mother church of denominations from every local church they plant. Methodist churches have always their names on each local church as an example. Fundamental Baptists are the same, or other Baptists retain the name Baptist as their identity. Take note of this. I want to emphasize the biblical principle that the name of the church does not matter because the Lord knows his own. This is hinted when he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 10 verse 27 Claiming to be of the Lord does not count. Eventually, it is the Lord himself who will confirm which is his and which is not his. 
One example of this is when a group of claim to be people of God by saying they are Jews. But the Lord identified them as a property of Satan. I am referring to Revelation 2 verse 9 which reads, I know your tribulation and your poverty says he to his church, and he adds, but you are rich and the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan.